You're listening to ND Works, a podcast for the Notre Dame campus community produced by the Office of Internal Communications. We're the team that brings you ND Works Weekly, ND Works Quarterly, The Week at ND, and a passion for sharing clear, concise, and interesting information with the faculty and staff of the University of Notre Dame. I'm Jenna Liberto, Director of Internal Communications, and I'm glad you're listening. J.P. Abercrombie joined Notre Dame Athletics as the Executive Associate Athletic Director for Culture and Engagement in February of 2022. She's responsible for stewardship of a culture of inclusive excellence in Notre Dame Athletics, including leading diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. J.P., I'll let you introduce yourself further in just a little bit, but first, thank you for being on the ND Works podcast. Well, thank you all for having me. I'm excited to talk with you this morning. Very excited to have our conversation. I was reading your bio. And your role at Notre Dame is also focused on engaging and relationship building with student athletes, with staff, with coaches, campus and industry colleagues, the local community and alumni. That's quite a list. And I remember when we first met, you talked about how if it has to do with people, that is where your job is. Tell me more about that. Well, Jenna, I don't know if you realized it, but even as you listed all those groups, I started to get a little tired hearing, <laughs> hearing Sweating that. a little bit. <laughs> uh, so jokingly, uh, affectionately, probably appropriately as well, we've just said my role is all the people and all the things. I love that. So if it involves people and how people interact with one another, chances are I'm involved in some way, shape, or form. Uh, it has never a dull moment, to say the least. And just trying to think through all of those groups, all of the individual and collective needs of the groups that you mentioned is certainly not a small feat, but it, it keeps me busy, to say the least. Tell me a little bit about what brought you to Notre Dame. I love to hear about everyone's uh, journey to Notre Dame. Maybe some of the people that that brought you here. (laughs) Yeah, I think it has to start with people uh, because in many ways I was recruited to come to Notre Dame. And while I grew up less than 100 miles away from here, Notre Dame wasn't always on my radar as a place that I thought I would end up. Um, Probably little me on the south side of Chicago might laugh and maybe even kick you in your shin, run away laughing (laughs) if you told me I'd work here. Uh, But it's, it's been a full year and a half or... 10 years, depending on who you ask. Right. Uh, So it 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 definitely starts with people. And when I think back to the summer of 2021 and some of the initial conversations that we were having about this role, this opportunity, the people are what what really hooked me. Uh, And then the opportunity to bring people together, to be more thoughtful, be more intentional and just help Notre Dame be better was something that I felt that I was the right person to do. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of conversations internally with the athletic staff, athletic department, I also got to meet a lot of campus partners when I came on my recruitment trip of sorts, uh, probably 30 people in all when we look back at it. And, and I couldn't be more proud of where we've been in that year and a half and even more proud of where we're going. So, JP, on Saturday, September 2nd, Notre Dame is hosting Tennessee State. It's our football home opener. There's a ton of energy on campus already, but especially as we get close to football season. Now, this will be the first time the two schools meet on the football field, and it's also the first time Notre Dame's football program will compete against an HBCU. Now, if you're not familiar with the acronym, HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. JP, with the rich traditions presented by both universities, this is an important moment beyond the football game. Would you say that's true? Absolutely. And I would even back up a little bit from from what you said in the intro there, because it's our domestic home opener. That's true. Yes. While we do have an opportunity to go abroad and have an international home opener, I think the juxtaposition of those two games together is is an interesting uh, storyline in and of itself. So to go to Ireland, uh, to really connect with our roots in a way, uh, and then also to come back and have this historic moment presents a great opportunity for us to learn not only more about ourselves as a campus, Um, but even to learn more about the distinctions that we have and maintain and those that we hold dear. When we think about higher education, um, the pathway for just continued growth and opportunities, especially for marginalized communities, our distinction as a a faith-based institution, as well as the distinction of being an HBCU, have a lot of similarities. And then when you look at the originating 
um, populations that really contributed to a thriving campus community and those that continue to do so today. There are a lot of similarities between Notre Dame and Tennessee State, as well as some other HBCUs as well. So this game this weekend, really <laughs> starting uh, August 31st, will give us a great opportunity to learn more about that and to engage in conversation and collaboration in the spaces too. Can you talk a little bit more about that, JP, these similar um, origin stories and this rich history. And I have to believe or, or we certainly hope that the camp, the campus community will feel that energy that weekend and leading up to the football game and really be able to um, take some thoughtful moments to think about what that means for them, for the university, and then for this relationship that we're building. Yeah, and really it's a relationship from my perspective that I hope is a catalyst uh, beyond this weekend. So while folks may become acquainted with that origin story or first encounter in HBCU uh, through the opportunities that this game provides, I hope that it doesn't stop there. When we think about August 31st as maybe the keynote kickoff date, Mm -hmm. if you will, uh, that's an opportunity to not only hear from some ND faculty, but also some community members and and on-campus programming. So I want to give a special thank you to our friends at UEE and the Experience ND website they just launched on August 1st because they're doing a great job trying to stay up to date with all of the events and opportunities there. If you haven't checked that out, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, So it's one of those things where this this opportunity, this game has been a galvanizing point for our our entire campus community and really even the local community when we think about it. Um, There are a number of academic units, uh, student affairs units that'll be um, having events or hosting opportunities to explore that origin story, to explore potential and future collaborations, and we'll use this game as an opportunity to do so. So I'm excited to see everything that comes together. As the dates get closer, there is a lot of energy building, as you mentioned. And whew, there's a lot going on in the next few weeks. So I'm excited just to have not only the the opportunity to kind of curate these experiences, but to engage with and for people um, around every event that's going to happen those few days. And I do want to talk more in depth about events, and we will before this episode is over. But before we get to that, um, let's talk a little bit about Game Weekend. The TSUND game um, will provide an exceptional experience for our student athletes and students in general on campus. Yeah. What, um, in your role, JP, or as you think about our athletics um, teams, what do you hope that experience feels like for students? Yeah, in many ways, this is an opportunity for us to activate on our Together Irish commitments. When we think about education, engagement, and enrichment, especially in the spaces of diversity, equity, inclusion, this is an opportunity for us to live those commitments out. Uh, When I think about the student-athlete experience and really what athletics is trying to do more broadly um, from the summer of 2020, even heightened in 2021 on through the present, I think it's about an opportunity to go to spaces that we rarely go, if ever, have been able to be in. And so in many respects, this is an opportunity to learn more about something different Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe remove some of the barriers actual or perceived in doing so and to learn more about ourselves. And so for that weekend through this game, I know that that's something on the student athlete side, we've given them an opportunity to explore Um, maximizing our partnership with the NBCU Academy for both institutions. Um, Both football programs had an opportunity to explore themselves and their storytelling abilities over the summer. They're an opportunity that the Academy provided. Um, There will be additional opportunities for collaboration on the career development side, Mm -hmm. uh, led mostly by DJ Washington and the great work that he's doing over at Morello. So on the student side, it's, it's really about maybe going into places that we haven't been and taking a deeper look at at who we are and who we want to be. Can I talk a little bit about a question I know you're getting a lot when we um, (laughs) when we talk about this, this game, the football game, and that's the band. Yep. And for people who don't know about the AOB, the aristocrat of bands, Mm -hmm. not only are they a fantastic performing group, they're actually a Grammy award winning. Yes. College (laughs) band. Tell me a little bit about them and then what role will they play in the weekend of events? 
So it's interesting because in HBCU culture more broadly, the band is often more important okay. than the football team. And conversations around campus have, have kind of made the analogy that the band is the equivalent to our football team, <laughs> just to kind of uh, contextualize that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm thankful that in October of 2022, I had an opportunity to see the band perform. Really? Now, this was pre-Grammy, so I hope Dr. Reggie McDonald doesn't hold that <laughs> against me. Uh, he's the director of bands there. Um, but it was just a unique opportunity to really take in the richness that is the musicality, the performance, mm -hmm. a, a real treat that I know our fans and all who come to campus that weekend will be able to explore. And, and I'm excited there. So the band <laughs> will be here. Great. Will be a great focal point. Uh, and really just a great opportunity to see and experience another side of HBCU culture. That will be memorable, a memorable <laughs> experience for sure. Let's get back to the events. Really want to make sure our campus community and the community, the wider um, Notre Dame and South Bend community can take part as much as, as they're able to that weekend. Um, so how can people get involved? What should they look for? Um, just how can they make sure that... Um, this weekend doesn't pass, and then they wish they had engaged more in the opportunity. Well, that FOMO, I'm, I'm okay creating right, a little bit a of thing. it. But <laughs> no, I would hate for folks to uh, miss out on any of those opportunities. The first thing that comes to mind, again, is the shout out to UEE yeah. and, and everything Experience ND. Everything that is happening that weekend is being updated on that website um, up until game day. So continue to check that out. Uh, I, I love that you mentioned the community piece of this because they've been partners in many mm. of these events and we've been able to use this weekend as a, again, a catalyst for continued collaboration and conversation there. Um, in some instances, there were longstanding community events that we've been able to partner with uh, and maybe even increase the accessibility for our campus population to know that those things are happening. One in particular will be on Friday night our Beyond the Yard event uh, that's hosted by the South Bend National Panhellenic Council. Uh, so the Divine Nine Fraternities and okay. Sororities. While we don't have Greek life on our campus, I am aware of many Notre Dame students who have crossed in grad chapters or who've sought the opportunity to join one of those organizations. And so for our Black affirming students, our student government leadership as well, to be able to be a part of that event, uh, and also athletics to be able to be a part of that event is something that we're really looking forward to, just to be with the community, mm -hmm. uh, to go out to them and then also make them come into us with open arms and, and feel welcome, um, not just the saying, but actually feel welcome right. to our campus. So I know that's a great opportunity for us there. Um, beyond that, oh, there's so many events that are swirling in my head, again, starting on August 31st and really running through September 3rd. So I know it'll be a packed uh, weekend of, of things. I'm also thinking about the game itself and the work that we've been doing with several nonprofit partners in our community who work with vulnerable populations, youth groups, um, those, you know, kind of addressing some of the biggest barriers and disparities in our community. We've been able to welcome them with a special community initiative uh, that we hope to not only see grow through this game, but also be a partner uh, initiative for future ticketed sports as well. But that's a, another interesting opportunity to think about on the ticketed sports side, because in, in the work that I've done with our community, many of them don't know about all the sports that we offer. So to be a part of a sport portfolio that has 26 varsity teams, Absolutely. Whoo, 26, again, back to all the people and all the things. <laughs> um, but most of our sports aren't ticketed. So when you think about the work that our national championship fencing program has done, or even Coach Corrigan in his 35 years here and men's lacrosse with their recent right. national championship, those sports aren't ticketed. And so those are things that I know we would love to see um, the local campus community and the South Bend community more broadly continue to come to feel welcomed and really be out there to support together as an Irish community. There's nothing like sitting in the stands for any for any <laughs> sport, uh, football or or any of the other. With 26, you mentioned, yes, yes. Um, great way to uh, feel like you're part of the Notre Dame community, and I'm confident you will feel that way. Uh, JP, thank you so much for talking with me. Excited for this weekend. Uh, a link to the Experience ND website will be in the show notes, so please check that out. Again, it is uh, it's a constant evolving thing because so too is this event and we're so excited about it. 
Look for stories about the Tennessee State at Notre Dame game in Andy Works Weekly. That's in your email inbox every Tuesday. So if you have more events, JP, let me know. Absolutely. We'll, we'll stick them in there. <laughs> and if you're a first-time listener of the Andy Works podcast, be sure to check out our episodes from last academic year to learn more about new initiatives from NDHR, hear about an outstanding new program called the Transformational Leaders Program. And if you're already feeling nostalgic this fall, well, you can reminisce on commencement by listening to our May episode. We'll be back next month with more news and stories by and for Notre Dame employees. I'm Jenna Liberto. Thanks for listening to ND Works.